Most role-playing games have three basic components, role-playing, exploration, and combat. Now the deadliest of these three to your player character is obviously combat. Want to learn the best tactics for D&D combat as a player? Let's dive into Live to Tell the Tale by Keith Amon. Now this is a great book designed to teach you all about player combat tactics when playing D&D. Keith has another book called The Monsters Know What They're Doing that teaches DMs creative ways to run monsters in combat. And I've reviewed that book and you can find it right up here. Now, Keith himself even says, if the DM has all these great tactics for the monsters, how well are the players gonna fare if they don't have some great tactics too? So he came out with this book, Live to Tell the Tale, Combat Tactics for Player Characters. This is a great resource for players that's gonna level out the playing field if your dungeon master really knows different combat tactics to use against you with those monsters. Now there is a lot of useful information in this book. Basically, it's broken down into four parts. Character creation and their combat roles, tactics in action, playing your position, and tactics in practice. So in the first section, which is all about creating your character and assigning different combat roles, Keith goes over things like picking a primary offensive ability and a primary defensive ability, then taking your two highest stat scores and assigning them to those abilities. He offers such advice as if you have one of your ability scores below a 10, which sometimes we refer to as a dump stat, to avoid putting it in one of the three big main stats, which would be Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom. Keith goes over different styles of fighting and which ability score combos are best for those. We've got the Frontline Fighter, which is best to have a high Strength and Constitution. The Shock Attacker, best for having high Strength and Dexterity. The Skirmisher, best for high dexterity and constitution. The marksman, best for high dexterity and wisdom. The supporter, which is best to have a high mental ability and a constitution. And the spell slinger, also a high mental ability and dexterity. He goes over the best combat tactics that are typical for each of these fighting styles so you can get the most out of your character. He also talks about how your class selection works well with each of these fighting styles as well. He even goes into those six different fighting styles and which feats are best for each one. My favorite part of this section is the chart on pages 22 and 23 that goes over each combat fighting style, which two ability scores are best to put your two highest scores in, the classes that are best for that fighting style, your ideal position on the battlefield, and the feats that are most useful too. Now when we get into the tactical combos section, the author goes over how to use certain conditions and timing on the battlefields so you can best use a sequence of actions and bonus actions that are going to either deal extra damage, give you or your allies advantage on attacks, or give your foes disadvantage. There was a lot of really great useful examples in here of things I never would have even thought of as a player. Tips like if you're not engaging in melee, it is best to always take cover when you can. Live to Tell the Tale has a whole chapter on uses of advantage and disadvantage in combat. With tips like if your character already has multi-attack or ways to make multiple attacks with actions and bonus actions, it's almost not worth it to give up one of those attacks just to gain advantage, but only have one attack. On average, you're gonna be able to do more damage simply taking two attacks, hoping you hit and doing damage, rather than giving up an attack to get advantage on the other attack and only do damage once. Another great piece of advice I loved in this book was how to use conditions to your advantage while in combat. 
You may have players in your party that can impose conditions on your opponents via spells or things like grappling. And he goes over each condition that D&D has and whether or not it's actually useful in combat. Things like invisibility is great for you and your allies because you get to attack with advantage and attacks against you will have disadvantage if they can even figure out where you are. A condition like paralyzed, if you can manage to apply it to one of your enemies, is fantastic. They can't move, take actions, reactions, any hits within five feet are criticals and they're at advantage. But something like the charmed effect isn't anywhere near as useful in combat because only the caster is going to charm the opponent, not the rest of the party. And as soon as the rest of the party attacks them, the condition goes away. Adventurers, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel a lot. I have a whole playlist of videos that you can find right up here that has some videos breaking down some of the different conditions in D&D and what the specifically they do. The author also talks about the best way to build a well-rounded party. Now you can play a D&D game where everyone is just whatever kind of character they want to be and that can be fun too. And that's the kind of game you should play if it's the kind of game you have the most fun in. But a lot of people really enjoy maybe getting together for that session zero, designing characters together and making a well-rounded party that's gonna give them the best adventure possible. Keith gives the advice of having at least two frontline fighters in the party, as well as one that uses the fighting style of skirmisher, marksman, or spellslinger. He also recommends that as far as that defensive stat goes, that at least half the party has constitution as their highest defensive stat, and half the party has dexterity as their highest defensive stat. There are so many combat tips available in this book. Things like he recommends as soon as combat starts, if possible, that the party spreads out. Whereas if you're fighting on a grid with miniatures, that you leave at least maybe two squares between everybody. Something I often forget to use as a player is how valuable the ready action can be. For some reason, I always think of wanting to ready a spell and hold it or ready an attack with a weapon and hold it. But he even offers such advice as holding the action of hiding, where a held action always triggers when something else happens. So you could say, I want to hold the hide action until the monster is distracted. So as soon as that monster is distracted by something else and looking away, your character now, it's essentially like using your action as a reaction because it doesn't really happen on your turn. Say the monster turns its attention away, you now maybe make a run to go behind a tree and roll a stealth check to see if you can successfully hide behind it. I also like his suggestion that using stealth in combat situations is gonna give you three main advantages. It might allow you to gain surprise at the start of the combat, gain advantage on your attacks, or impose disadvantage on attacks against you. Now it's always good to recognize when things aren't going well and you need to move away, get the hell out of Dodge. And the author also describes certain instances when it's actually best to use dash, disengage, or dodge. He mentions that disengage is always a really good choice. If you're getting kind of pummeled, you need to move away, you want to avoid opportunity attacks, but you have an ally that's able to step in and continue the fight so you're not pursued. Also, it's a great way to move away from multiple attackers. You may be surrounded and getting pummeled and getting close to death and you think maybe you want to take the dash action so you can double move and get as far away, but you're going to take multiple opportunity attacks and risk death. This is when disengage is a great option. Another great part of this book is deciding what situations are worth it to spend spell slots. For example, he talks about the sleep spell, right? Which can put all of your enemies within a certain radius fast asleep. He explains that for the level spell this is, it's really most efficient if you're gonna be able to put at least four enemies to sleep. If you're gonna be able to put more than four enemies to sleep, he calls it a no brainer, go ahead and use it. But if you're really only gonna put two or three enemies to sleep, it might not be worth expending the spell slot for that unless there's nothing else you can do and you might be about to die. 
He also has a lot of really great information in here on how to decide when it's best to cast your spell at a higher spell slot. One of my favorite pieces of advice from this book is that Keith recommends establishing certain criteria for your character that you're always going to use so you're not trying to make these decisions mid-turn. Sometimes there's nothing less fun than stalling the game and slowing things down because it's your turn and you haven't really decided what to do. As a dungeon master, I always tend to let the player know whose turn is coming up next that they're going to be next so they can start deciding. But I love Keith's recommendation in this book that you might want to have like a predetermined set of rules for yourself that, hey, if, if the situation starts to get like this, my fighting style is best to do this outcome. Develop some situational decisions beforehand that are best for your class is going to keep the game flowing and make it a lot more fun for everyone. Now the chapter on tactics in practice is pretty cool. It's actually almost half of the book, but it is a great opportunity to see how all of this works in action. There's four different scenarios, level one, level five, level nine, and level 15, where you're given the characters in that game with all their stats, their initiative, the situation of what's going on, and what he decided to have each character do in each round to be the most tactical for a great combat. I love this because he explains why he made each decision for each character to do what they did and what the final outcome was. So you can see how these tactics work in practice. Adventurers, if you love all things D&D, tips, tricks, unboxings, and reviews, please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Time for the epic question of the day. Are you going to pick up a copy of Keith's book, Live to Tell the Tale? I have an affiliate link in the description down below if you want to check it out and a link for the monsters to know what they're doing. I recently learned through Keith's social media accounts that he actually has another book coming out in the fall of 2021 that's even more monsters know what they're doing, and it covers the monsters that are in Volos and Mortenkainen. So you're going to want to be on the lookout for that book this fall as well. And another shout out to the Dungeon Glitch for my awesome t-shirt, Crying is a Free Action. Link down below to where you can find his awesome t-shirts.